Okay, I have all the pieces cut. I took a file, deburred them. There was some plastic burr on here, not a lot, but there was some. So I took that off, just nice light file. Now what we're gonna do next is I'm going to take a compass and I'm gonna trace out this radius for the Lazy Susan. This is the hardware for the bottom, Lazy Susan. You got ball bearings in there and this spins around. Okay, that'll go on the bottom of the Epoxy River uh, Lazy Susan, the serving tray. We'll go ahead and get this plastic all deburred. Now, would it be in this thin and this and shorter? It's very flexible. I can go ahead and turn it in a radius like this. So once I cut this out, I'm going to be able to take and go right or wrap this right around with a nice radius. And then we're going to still have the height. And I'll take and put screws in the bottom, into the bottom of the half inch piece. And we'll wrap it right around and we'll caulk the inside. And then it'll be nice and watertight or epoxy tight in our case. And I'll take it over on the belt sander and just press up the edges just to take the machine marks out. The plastic cuts relatively easily. I just need to sand them on a belt sander. You can see they're a little rough. And then we will start putting the sides on. Okay, I got this all sanded on the belt sander. Actually, the disc sander. I just sanded it with a disc or a belt sander. Either one will work. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be going around it with the plastic for your edge. So you're going to go around like that, and then that will hide any small imperfections anyway. And then down in the corner, eventually, you're going to caulk it, okay? Now, what I do is I put this in a vise. I start it over at the one end. I put one screw in, and you just work it around. You just slowly work it around. Every two, three inches, put a self-tapping screw. The screws I use, I'll show you in a minute. Let me get this tightened up. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten this in the vise. Don't go crazy tight. If you want to put wood on it to protect it from making jaw marks, you can. I didn't. I just didn't go very tight. So what I do is I wrap it. Okay. I pre-drill it 
about every two or three inches. I just drill in. Then I take a self-tapping for metal studs. Okay, just a little self-tapping screw. It has a little self-tapper on it. And that's all I use. Just go very slowly into the plastic. If you spin it, if you go in too fast, it will strip. It's only plastic. Okay, so then we do the same thing, about another two, three inches. I drill a hole, take a self-tapping screw, I put it in, nice and easy. Okay, if I start getting off, I just move it over a little bit. I just keep working it around. Just do one at a time. That way you can adjust it if you need to. It's easier to adjust it. That actually went right in my pocket. Didn't even have to bend over. All right, so we'll go here with another one. Okay, anywhere that you think another one needs to be, you can just drill another hole and add one later. Same thing here. Then I'm going to have to take another piece. I'm going to have to cut one to fit so we can go all the way around. All right. So that's how you do it. You just go right around. I'm going to finish it up. Separation right up here. So I'll just do the same thing. Again, no wrinkles. That'll seal that up. And then we're going to caulk the inside and the bottom. I'm going to caulk both just for precautionary measures. And then I'll flip it over and I'm going to tape the edge. Same thing. Just kind of put it there. And then we'll cut it off. We'll try to get as little wrinkles as we can. So that's how I'm going to get this sealed up. Okay, we're making the square form similar to the radius form. Okay, I got it in the vise. All right, I took same thing, eighth inch HDP plastic, and then I'm putting the metal stud self-tapping screws into the bottom, okay? And that's what's going to hold this on. Now, I had this stuff, so that's why I used it. I mean, if you're going to make a mold and you're going to buy plastic, I probably recommend you using something a little bit thicker, but this will work. And it's only a serving tray, so there's not a lot of pressure on these sides. I mean, these are actually pretty rigid. Um, and then when once you're done, you're going to take and caulk along the bottom. Okay, you're going to caulk the bottom and the corners, and you'll caulk this all up. And then caulk the outside also. And what I recommend is if you really want to make sure this is 100% sealed, Caulk it, let the caulk all dry, fill it up with water, see if it leaks. If it leaks, then you got to find out where it leaks, okay? So that's probably the best way to test them. And then obviously, before you put your wood and your epoxy in there, you need to dry the form out if you do the water test, okay? And probably for the water test, you should leave it in there at least a couple hours, three, four hours overnight's better. Okay, that way the water give it time to work and leak if you have a leak. Okay. Okay, here's all our molds. They're all ready to pour. Alright, so for the lazy Susan, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go inside here and I'm going to caulk. Okay, I'll take silicone caulk, put it around here, take my finger, just smear it around so it seals. Okay. And that's what's going to keep all of our uh, epoxy from leaking out. If you want to test this, you're unsure if it's going to be watertight. Um, the best way is just to take water and fill with water for a few hours. Not right away. you got to let the caulk dry. But that's about the best way. So I'm going to take my finger up the side here because remember we pieced the plastic together because it wasn't long enough so we pieced it i put tyvek tape but i'm also going to silicone it so we'll just do that a little extra silicone doesn't hurt. You don't want too much silicone down in the corner. Um, if you get too much, what will happen is it'll make either too big of a radius or if you got big globs around, that's going to duplicate into your Lazy Susan, into your uh, whatever you're making. Okay. And most of the time it doesn't matter because it's going to be on the bottom, but on the sides it could matter. If you have like a big hole, then you're going to have to try to fill it later, okay? Because it's going to duplicate whatever you have. So, all right, I got this all sealed up. Okay, I got a rag here. Nice to keep a rag so you can keep your hands clean. I'm a real mess with silicone. I'm also going to go around the bottom and just silicone the bottom just to give us a little extra protection. And then we're going to set this to the side, and we're going to start doing the coasters next. I'll show you a few of those. Okay, so where it separates from the bottom and the side, I just take and just smear the silicone in that crack, just so we have a little extra protection. It's not going to hurt. Because the last thing we want is a leak. We go to pour, and this stuff's, our epoxy starts running all out, and it's very hard to stop a leak once the epoxy is, starts getting the surface all wet. So, there is ways to do it. And I sh I'll show you in other videos, but... And it's not very easy. You never really get all the leaks sealed. Okay, you can slow them down. That's about it. 